Hi, I'm Nick Raines from Leica Academy Australia. In this video, we're going to take a quick first look at the super resolution mode in Adobe Camera Raw. You've probably noticed that over the entire history of digital cameras, the sensors get bigger, the resolution gets bigger, and the file sizes get bigger. Now, that's always been towards the aim of capturing more detail in a single capture, which therefore allows you to do bigger and bigger and bigger prints. Now, you could argue that the, the limit on the print size is not that great. I mean, A3, A3+, plus, which would be a double page spread in a magazine from a, from a professional point of view is probably the limit. But if you want to do big exhibition prints, then the more the merrier. Squeezing out the maximum detail out of whatever the sensor captures is the job of the RAW processor. And in this particular circumstance, I'll be looking at Adobe Camera RAW. Now that is the same or almost the same as of pretty much the time of this video as what you get in Lightroom because when you're processing a file in Lightroom, the algorithms that process that image, demosaic it, create the image itself are identical to those in Camera Raw, except for as of the recording of this video, Adobe Camera Raw has just been updated to include this new thing, this new AI machine learning feature called Super Resolution. And what it does is it doubles the file size. So if you had 6,000 by 6,000 pixels this way and 4,000 pixels this way, which would be a 24 megapixel sensor, you'll end up with 12,000 by 8,000, which is best part of 100 megapixels. So it's 96 megapixels, isn't it? Not megabytes, but megapixels. And that's a lot. But as you're probably aware, simply scaling up an image just makes one pixel into two. And it also makes the edges twice as wide. So you gain nothing in terms of crispness of the image and you gain nothing in terms of resolution. The sensor can only record what the sensor can record. So calling it super resolution is maybe a little bit misleading, but what it's doing is it's making sure that what resolution you do have is as well defined as is possible. And they've been training this AI software through this machine learning process. I'm not entirely sure exactly how that works to look at images at different scales and see what it is that makes one different from the other. See how those edges are transitioned uh, and so on. Now, of course, there are applications out there which will res up your image for you. Um, I don't have any of those. I tend to not do a great deal of up resing these days. I find that my camera is giving me plenty of resolution anyway, but still in the past I have tinkered with those. And it seems that what happens is that the software maintains the edges but stretches the bits that are not edges, if that makes sense. So if you could fill, if you could build a mask for an image where you protect all the edges and leave them nice and crisp, but you do all the image sizing for the smooth areas where there is no detail, you can end up keeping the crispness of the image and making it bigger. So it's a little bit of uh, an optical illusion, like a lot of photography. This super resolution system seems to be a different way of working. And from my first uh, looks at it, it seems to work really well, but not for all images. And of course, the, the um, my first inclination was to look at my latest camera, high resolution images, and just see how big they will go. But then it occurred to me, that's kind of a bit obvious. What if I go back in time and look at some old shots from older cameras. So the example I'm going to give you here is a shot I took back in 2015 on the Deluxe Type 109, which was a 12.7 megapixel point and shoot. So it's just a little camera that you don't expect an enormous amount from compared to what I'm working with these days. So let's just swap over to Photoshop and Camera Raw, and I'll just talk you through the process and show you how you actually use the, uh, the new feature. And I'll show you the difference between scaling it up normally and using this system. And I think you'll be quite impressed. So let's just move over to Photoshop. Okay, so I've opened this image into Photoshop and because it's a raw file, it immediately fires up the Adobe Camera Raw plugin. In this case, it's 13.2. So I'm using 
Photoshop 2021, the latest version, and I've just downloaded the updated version of Camera Raw, which is 13.2. And this is a picture I took in India quite a few years ago, as I say, in 2015. And it's pretty good. It's a, it was a very, very nice little camera. And if I zoom in there to 100%, I'll just set that to 100 down there, you should see that that image is quite nicely sharp. There's, I have no issues at all with the crispness of that. But what if I wanted to double the file size and yet maintain this fantastic detail down here? With this new plugin installed, you simply right click in the image to get a context sensitive menu. And then down the bottom, second from the bottom, you'll see this enhance. And this has been here for a couple of years because there used to be, and there still is, this raw details option or enhance details option, which did this very, very subtle improvement of detail in the shot. It was so subtle that I never used it. It took quite a long time to process the image. And to be honest, I didn't see a huge benefit from it. Well, that has all changed because if you choose this new super resolution mode, you'll find that the raw detail section grays out, but it's still being applied. So you're getting the raw details and this doubling up of resolution and this machine learning process, which adds an amazing amount of detail. So let me just move this window out of the way and you'll see the little square here is centered on his nose nicely. And I'm just going to click on his mustache. And what you're seeing in this window here is a magnified view of that little box there. And if I click and hold, you'll see before, it says without enhance in the window and after. And I think you should see that all of those jaggies are disappearing and all of those edges of those hairs are much better uh, defined. And in fact, if I just click on his eyebrow, it's even more impressive because without his eyebrow there, that black eyebrow is quite mushy. There's very little to distinguish the individual hairs. But when I let go of my mouse, look how much definition has been added. It's like micro contrast. So once more, off, and on. That will show up in a print, but particularly when you enlarge it to a, you know, to a big size. Uh, the skin has got more information, so that's after, before, after, before. So all you need to do is simply click on the enhance button here and let it chug away. Now, how long it takes will depend to a great extent on how powerful your computer is. This is a, a small 21 inch iMac that's about a year old with a limited amount of RAM. This is the computer I use for my uh, demonstrations for videos like this. Um, and, and it's finished already in the time it took me to say that. So you may have noticed on the screen it said time taken to complete five minutes. Well, I don't know where that comes from because it's already done and I didn't cut that anywhere in during when I was speaking, that's genuinely how long it took. So now we've got two images, both are DNG files because it creates an entirely new DNG file from the original and applies that enhancing and that super resolution into this new DNG file. So I've now literally got two. And what it allows me to do is to select both of them and command clicking on the second one and hit open. And that will bring them both into Photoshop. But before I do that, let me just draw your attention to these numbers down here, which tells me what that image size is. And if I click on the new image singly, it says 6,176 by 8,224, 50.8 megapixels. And the original one, 3088 by 4112, 12.7 megapixels. So that new one is precisely double the width and double the height in terms of pixels. Let me just select that and go open. And it will now open both of those images into Photoshop. And I'm going to put them side by side and magnify them so that you can see exactly the difference between the two. And I think you'll be reasonably impressed. So that's the first one. The second one, they're both up there. I'll go to Window, Arrange, Two Up Vertical. We have the two pictures side by side. So I'm going to enlarge the left one to 100% and center it like that. And then I'm going to enlarge the right hand one to 200% so that they're the same size on the screen. And I think you will agree that that left hand image is appreciably better than the right hand image. And the reason I've taken it to 200% is so that we're seeing the same size image on the screen. 
if I was to take this right hand image and go to image size and take it to 200%, I am now using Photoshop's up resing tool. Same resolution. Oops, let's change that back to 200%. There we go. And that's now going to 145 megabytes from 36 megabytes. And there's the pixel dimensions doubling. Okay. And I'm using the Preserve Details version 2. Now, you may choose to experiment with some of these. I find this one works pretty well. It's probably the best of the lot. And let me just OK that. So we're enlarging the original. Let me just center it again and take it back down to 100%. So they're now the same size file. And once more, you'll see that even with it resing up, I'm still not as good as that super resolution image on the left hand side. Now, of course, I can sharpen this image, but anything I can do on the right hand image, I can also do on the left hand image. So any improvement I make on the right, I can match on the left. So the left hand one is starting in a better position to the right hand image. And I think you'll find it's pretty clear how much better it is. Let me just go right in and you'll start to see the lack of definition 400%. Let me just match those up so that you can see easily. And I'm hoping you can see there that that left hand image has just got that extra resolution. Now, I know we are pixel peeping here. There's no question about it. But this will show up in a print, but only at the limits of the print, only at the limits of the size you should be taking this file up to. So what I, I probably could have taken this image to, let's see, image size in inches. Let's work in inches at 300 pixels per inch. A 20 by 27 inch print. Now that's a pretty big print, 30, almost 30 inches wide by 20 inches high. So that's double what it could have been before. It would have been before 10 inches by 13 inches, give or take, which is still respectable, but it's only halfway between A4 and A3. Now we've got a 30 inch almost by 20 inch image of pretty much the same quality. And I haven't made any prints yet. Um, that's my next um, step to see how this looks in print. But right now, looking on the screen, I am very, very happy with what I'm seeing. Um, and I'll just bring that one back down to 100%. Command minus 100%, and this one down to 100%. And that should, and I'm gonna leave it at that point. And I'm hoping that if you're watching this in HD, and the video has done a reasonable job of keeping that image nice and sharp, you should quite clearly see the benefits of using the super resolution. So don't expect an amazing amount of extra detail because the sensor can, through the limits of physics, only capture so much detail. But what this plugin is trying to achieve is to make sure that every little bit of detail that you do have has been maximally depicted by the final result. So when the, the raw file is demosaic in the software, which is quite a complicated process, any hint of an edge is correctly dealt with. It also seems to remove a little bit of noise, but that's something I might need to test in the future. So this, uh, as of the date of this video, this is new to Adobe Camera Raw. It's version 13.2, uh, I think. Download it, have a look, see what you think. Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know what other people think about it. Uh, I've only had the software for, well, for today. So I've not done extensive tests, but my initial test, which is basically what I'm showing you here, seem to indicate that it's a definitely a worthwhile step if you need to res your images up for bigger prints. My name is Nick Rains from Leica Academy Australia. Thank you very much for listening. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel or again, leave a comment below and I'll talk to you again in the next video.